Hello, it's Duncan. I have to confess I'm really confused by AI tools for software development. I found them to be very useful when asked to do simple tasks I don't know how to do. Writing bash loops or FFmpeg command lines, that sort of thing. But for real code bases that can be frustrating, either requiring repeated cajoling to get things right or just missing the point completely. Mostly I think that for the day-to-day -day of tasks of writing tests and then code and then refactoring, I'm quicker on my own, thank you. Many other people seem way more impressed than I am though, and there's no doubt I'm not an expert. So I continue to try and find out why our experiences seem to be so different. As part of that investigation, today I'm looking into an IntelliJ AI plugin, written not by JetBrains, but by Stefan Janssen, founder of the DevOps Conference Empire. The plugin allows us to experiment with different LLMs, and is also able to upload entire projects as context, so that the AI really can be all seeing. It also means we can run local models as well as those in the cloud. My results continue to be mixed, but stay tuned until the end for an exciting announcement. Uh, no, that's irritating. On a recent bike ride, I was listening to Happy Path Programming by Bruce Eckel and James Ward, and they were interviewing Stefan Janssen, who runs the DevOx conferences, and he's written his own plugin for IntelliJ, which allows us to use an LLM of our choice. So I thought it would be interesting to try this out. This isn't a link, but we'll go and look for the DevOx IntelliJ plugin. Here we go. And let's see what happens if we click Get. Uh, we can download it, but I guess we're better off going to IntelliJ and getting it from there. So here's a nice recently updated IntelliJ in our TDD Gilded Rose project. So let's look for plugins. And we will look in the marketplace for DevOx and install DevOps Genie. That was nice and quick. Apply. Didn't seem to need a reboot. Oh, and here it is. Brilliant. Now then, at the top here, we can select the source of LLMs. So we've got Anthropic and GPT-4 and Google and various things. And in particular of interest to me is that some of these are local. So Llama and I think Llama C++ and maybe LM Studio are all able to run local LLMs which would keep things cheap. But as I'm making a very small fortune from this channel, that's £8.25 for the last 28 days, I've splashed out on an account. The cool kids all seem to like Anthropic Claude. Unfortunately, for some reason, I couldn't claim $5 in free credit, so I had to put my own credit card behind it. But it turns out that $5 goes quite a long way. Once you have an account, you can get an API key, and that API key can go in the settings here for Anthropic API key. So turn your back while I do that. There we go. And I think we're going to enable the stream mode, which lets us see the response as it comes in. So we'll say OK to that. And now we should be able to select Anthropic and see the models that are available to us and how much they cost, and this tokens here, I think that may be how many we can send, but I don't know, to be honest. It does at least give us an idea of the relative cost of different models. So, which model to choose? Claude seems to have three different model sizes, Haiku, Sonnet, and Opus, and a set of different versions. Sonnet appears to be the middle model size, and the only one available at 3.5, and I suppose we might as well be using the latest version, and it's sort of middle of the road for cost. So let's go with that and see whether anything is working by typing something into the prompt. So let's say, hello, can you help me with software development? Okay, so enter doesn't work. Alt enter, control enter, no, command enter, no. Okay, so I'm gonna to have to press the button. And here we go, we've got a response. Hello, of course, I'd be happy to help you with software development as the DevOps Genie IDA plugin I'm designed to assist you. So from this, I think we can tell that we're not talking to the raw sonnet. Something in the prompt has told it what it can do and that it's being used by the plugin. Well, that's good. Okay, let's see what it knows about this project. Uh, we've got the same prompt here. Hmm. I guess we can just overwrite it with, what can you tell me about this project? Ah, here it doesn't seem to know anything about the project. It's only talking about DevOps Genie IDEA plugin. Maybe we can help it by opening the readme file. I wonder whether if we have a file open, it will be sent as part of the context. Aha. Okay then, so by having a file open, the contents of that file has been sent off to Claude and Claude now knows some things like the name of the project and 
well, actually the things that this file says, but it sort of interpreted them, which is quite clever. If I open the requirements file as well, that's a list of the stories that we've been implemented, and we'll ask the same question again. Well, again, I think it's done quite a good job there. It's extracted a feature list. It's inferred that we've ticked things when they're going on. It's pulled out some technical things and future plans. And the incremental nature of the story suggests an agile or iterative development approach. So again, I'm impressed, but I think we've established that it's only seeing the files that I have open here. But I notice there is this add full project to prompt. That, as I understand it, is a way to take the text of all of our source and send it up to Claude. So let's try that. Ah, project context truncated due to token limit was 167,000 tokens, but the limit is 100,000 tokens. And that 100,000 tokens seems to be this limit here. Now, as I understand it, a token isn't a word and it isn't a character, it's a bit of a word, but I really don't understand why this project is so big. Let's have a look around. Actually, instead of browsing randomly, I have an idea. If we go to the command prompt, we can now ask AI Assistant, to list all the files in this directory and subdirectory by size with the largest on top. Well, let's have a go. There we are, and we have a nice upgrade to the terminal I see where we have these blocks of output. So we can scroll individually in that. So this project is 27 megabytes. Interesting, where's the biggest file? Oh, why am I doing that by hand? Let's try again with AI Assistant and ask it, list the files, not the directories, under this directory by size, with the largest at the end. Try that. Well, we didn't get the largest at the end. Let's see whether we just got the files. Oh, it turns out that we're not seeing the individual commands in their own little things, that's a shame. Never mind, uh, where is our command then? Make this bigger, scroll up and down a bit randomly. Ah, here we go. My goodness, it's amazing where files are able to be stashed away. Still not seeing anything that I consider to be one of our own files that's big. Ah, I have found a mode where it selects the output from each individual command, although we don't scroll in them individually. And now that I look at it, we had this 388k of places response.json, which is in source test resources and then copied into the build. Let's have a look at that file. Ah, that was a copy of a response from the Google's Places API that we're using when we were prototyping a search for competition. Mm. I don't think that's going to be very helpful for the LLM. In fact, I think it might confuse it. But I do have to know that we can exclude directories. So if we go to settings and devops genie ah here we go and we can exclude a directory and after a little bit of confusion discover that this just needs the last of the directory names so this is going to be competition if i have more than one directory called competition i suppose that might get awkward but we'll do that and then say okay now we'll remove the project and try again Ah, and this time we only had 41,000 tokens, which was under 100,000. Brilliant. Ah, oh, well, reading that, and I guess you can pause it and read it as well as I can. That's really quite clever. Oh, and I noticed actually it's reset the model, so that was cheap, but maybe not as good as it could be. So let's change the model, restart a conversation, and now we say add the project. Done that. This is 3.5 Sonnet. What can you tell me about this project? Go. Ah, there we go. And being a different LLM, it has found different things. But in fact, both models, I think, gave a good summary. Now it's got all the code. Let's ask it, how could I improve the code? Well, that was all very generic. I think I'm going to say give specific examples. Okay, then let's judge Claude for his, or is it their, Kotlin taste. 
First suggestion is error handling. In the DB items class, we could create more specific exception types. Yes, I suppose so, maybe. Although this item not found exception, oh, I can't scroll right. Can I move this? So it's suggesting a database connection exception and an item not found exception, but then not using them. Okay, well, it's a parrot making noises it's heard before. Dependence injection, we could use coin for dependence injection, I suppose. Caching, uh, yes, we could probably cache. Asynchronous processing, we could make stock list priced by a suspend function, but if we did, then we'd have to run it somewhere. Uh, yes, don't really like that. Swagger definition, well, that's simply not going to work with HBPK, I don't think. Pagination, well, actually, that would be a good idea, and that code might work. So I'm going to take this with a pinch of salt, but one thing I have really been meaning to do for a while is change the build from build.gradle to build.kts. Apparently translations is a thing that LNMs do really well, so let's ask it, please translate the build.gradle file to use the Kotlin Gradle DSL. Well, as it scrolled up, that seemed to be plausible. Let's try copying and pasting it. So we'll take this thing from here. We're going to duplicate this file, calling it build.gradle.kts. We'll select it all, paste, reformat. I think that might have messed everything up, but let's delete the Gradle file first and ask Gradle to re-import things. Well, let's try a build. Hmm, I expected as much. I think the formatting is basically completely hosed. Can I reformat in here? No, I can't. Let's have a look at the output here. I think our issue was largely the pasting because this thing looks a lot more healthy than this. I'm just going to see whether I messed that up. Copy, select all, delete everything for now, and paste. No. Okay, well, I could try and fix that myself, or I can come over here, I can say, roll back these changes, and I can say, show me the result as a patch file. Okay, let's take that thing, copy it to the clipboard, and then in IntelliJ, I think somewhere there's an apply patch file. Apply patch from clipboard. Splendid. Oh, second file name expected line zero. That's a shame. I wonder what the contents of the clipboard looks like. Let's just give ourselves a new scratch buffer, paste that in there. And we definitely seem to have an issue here with line endings when we copy from this conversation. Oh, well, I'm going to go back to where we were by the local history. So I think we want to go here and say revert selected and later changes. That will give us back our build up. Yes. Now we can go in here and maybe fix it up by hand for now. <laughs> This is exactly the sort of tedious thing that AI was supposed to prevent me from having to do. Well, about 10 minutes in total of tedium, and it finally can be parsed by Gradle that doesn't compile. I think we might get somewhere by looking at the diffs between these two files. Can I do that here? Uh, no, that's irritating. Uh, let's restore that one and then look in here and see what has happened. Well, for a start, it's upgraded the versions of things, which is a pretty bad idea if I'm just trying to translate something. I suppose we could have asked it not to upgrade things, but given the hassle we've had so far, I think I'm going to bail with this one. It's a start and at least gives me an idea of how to make Duke Generator and so on work. So I'm not going to throw it away. I think what I am going to do though is I'm just going to rename that 
to be kts.to do. So I've got something to play with by hand and not bore you. Let's see whether everything's back to normal. <laughs> Who knows what it's doing here? Phew. Well then, all that help seems to have cost me a dollar, and I am really mean, so let's see what we can do to run those models locally. In the podcast, Stefan mentions Olama as a way of running the open source Lava model locally. So let's go and get that. We can download. That's a zip file when we open the Olama app from inside it. It offers to move it into applications, which is good. There it is. Let's run it. And you can't see this, but up there, there is a little Olama icon that does nothing but quit. It seems that Olama can fetch and run different models. And the top hit here is Llama 3.1. And a little bit of Googling reveals that we can use the command line to pull and run a model. So a Llama run Llama 3.1. And you can see that we have 4.7 gigabytes of model to come down. I won't bore you with this. Okay then, after quite a little while that seems to be running, let's try asking it a question. Can you help me program computers? Not very fast. Oh, there we go. Well, that's nice. Now, one thing we discovered is that a context window is a thing. Let's ask how big is your input context window? Okay, then that's 2048 tokens, which we know isn't going to cover much of our project. But now Llama is running. Let's go back over to IntelliJ. I've opened the same two files as before. We'll go to DevOx Genie and we will create a new conversation with Olama. And we'll ask the same question again. What can you tell me about this project? A Kotlin project. Interestingly here, it says, if I were to write an idea plugin for this project, I would focus on providing features that enhance the TDD experience. So evidently something in the DevOps Genie plugin preamble has skewed it towards thinking about plugins. Can we add the full project? Well, it says that it has. Let's ask it a question that would require it to know. So we can say, what can you tell me about the item class? Okay, so it looks like we haven't actually sent the project. I think we'll start a new chat, shall we? So we know where we are. Add the full project, which is 42,000 tokens against the eight that I thought it said it allowed. Let's ask the same question again. Tell me about the item class. And goodness me, it's now having a crack at Python. But I think it's clear here that it doesn't actually know anything about the project that it hasn't seen from these two open files. So I don't know what's happened about uploading the project to Llama, but I think we expect it not to work with an error. We haven't got an error, but it also doesn't appear to have worked. So there we have it. We have successfully installed DevOps Genie. We've managed to connect it to anthropic models on the internet and Llama 3.1 running locally. We haven't been successful adding the full project to a local model, but that worked with anthropic. And the results for both have been on the surface impressive, but maybe lacking when we look into the detail. I suspect the problem is that I'm just not very good at writing prompts. So I'm delighted to announce that Stefan Jansen has agreed to pair with me next week to teach me how to wrap LLMs around my little finger. I'm really looking forward to that. If you'd like to see it, then please subscribe to the channel, like this video so that YouTube carries on showing them to you. And if you want to support my work, you could buy the book that I wrote with that price called Java to Kotlin a Refactoring Guidebook, details of which are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching.